The Lord dropped this word in my heart. And honestly, when I first started studying about it, I really didn't know where the Lord was going or what he was speaking at first. But then after I started to break it down, you know, the, the word is always for the messenger first. <laughs> And the word the Lord gave me this morning is, but seek you first the kingdom of God. But seek you, you, Elijah. Yes. Oh, yeah. You, Jace, as a teenager. You, Manuel. You, Robert. You, Pam. Seek you first the kingdom of God. I can seek the kingdom of God on behalf of my husband, on behalf of my family. I can stand in the gap. But the Lord's directions in this passage was, Edwina, you seek the kingdom of God. And all these things will be added unto you. But you seek. So if you'll turn with me to Matthew 6. Verse 33 and 34. Matthew 6, verse 33 and 34. It's always a joy to be here. I always love, I mean, this is home to me. I feel right at home every time I come back, and, and I love it here. And listen, let me tell you this if you have been here for a long time, been here for some time, or just started to come, this is a special place here. Amen. This is a special place in Patterson. God is moving in this place. The word of God says this. But seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Sufficient for today is its own trouble. That word but stuck out, stuck out to me. That word but means it's an introductory phrase or a clause contrasting what has been mentioned before. And Jesus is talking to his people, hear me, about anxiety and worry. Anxiety and worry. Fear. Things that come to rob us of our peace. Things that come to torment us. Let me tell you this. Anxiety is the feeling of worry, nervousness, uneasiness, immediate event of something unknown. Has anybody ever been there? Okay, thank you. I'm going to ask this today. I really am. And it's going to be a little different. I need some interaction today. Okay, from the audience. All right, we're going, to, we're going to do this a little different than me just preaching at you. I want y'all to talk to me today because I really feel like in this season of life, okay, in, in the economic place that we're in, in the moral decline that we're in as a nation and as a church, okay? As in everything that we've been facing even individually in our personal lives and our personal matters, a feeling of worry and uneasiness has come upon us. At one way or another, you can admit it or not. Worry, hear this, is to afflict mental distress. Yes. Y'all hear what I'm saying to you? Yes. Yes. Come on. An agitation. A disturbance that won't go away. That continually assails you and it's an, a rough and an aggressive torment and attack. Yes. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know about you. Finances in itself can do that. All right, all right. Finances. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay. Maybe there's a disturbance in your spirit. Maybe we've been struggling with something. He who, 
I didn't tell my husband to sing that song, you know, and I really wasn't thinking about that song at all. But but he who the sun sets free is free indeed. That's right. That's right. That's right. And the job of the enemy is to get you to believe that you aren't free yeah. when he's already set you free. Yeah. He said, come with clean hands. You know your hands are clean because the blood of the lamb and the blood of the lamb only, yeah. right? You didn't make yourself clean That's the first right. day, and you ain't going to make yourself clean today. That's right. And you are never going to make yourself clean continuously. The blood of the lamb and the blood of the lamb. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? The Bible says that in Romans 14, 17, the Bible says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, joy, and the Holy Ghost. Righteousness by the blood of the lamb. Peace because I'm right with God based on the blood of the lamb. Joy and the Holy Ghost. Amen. So if we ain't living within that framework, then we ain't living in the kingdom of God. Come on. And I don't know about you, but these culprits, anxiety and worry, have been choking the life out of me. Can I say that? That's right. That's right. Can, can we say that? Okay. I can, I can preach to this congregation here. So what I want to look at is a couple things today. The heart of the believer to not stop seeking after God. To not stop despite your circumstance or situation. Have you ever been through something that has been so crushing? You don't even know if you're going to make it to the next day. Well, Jesus says tomorrow's troubles are sufficient for themselves. And sometimes... Baby, that's hard for me, isn't it? Jeff always tells me, would you stop worrying about tomorrow? Tomorrow's troubles are sufficient for themselves. And I'm like, but you got to think about things, right, Pastor Matt? Like, but, but you can think about it. You can get wisdom from the Lord. But the job of the enemy is to use these things to distort your perception and your view of God and his kingdom. And what he has given you based on the blood of Jesus. And I'm telling you, it takes one thought. (laughs) One thought. One something to happen. Something to creep in. To get to to rob what? Your righteousness, your your peace, peace, your joy, and the power of the Holy Ghost. So, don't stop pursuing God. Listen, if you feel like your circumstance is drawing you away from God, that is not God. Hear me? Anxiety and worry are the number one culprits to choking the word of God out of our hearts. And I'm going to talk about this so y'all get ready. Our prayer life uh oh. I said, Pastor Matt, I showed up for prayer. Where are the people? No people. Now listen, you can say, I pray on the way here. I pray this morning. I pray. There's something about corporate prayer, Pam. When you come together and you hear the cry of the heart of the people that will encourage you. Prayer plugs you in. Prayer, you can lay hold of the kingdom of God through prayer. Come on. And if you don't know how to pray, you got to show up and let those who have gone before you. Yes. And hear them and yes. catch the prayers of the saints and be encouraged in your faith. Yes. Amen. Can I say that? Amen. Amen. Listen, prayer is labor. <laughs> yes, Naya. Just tell me what you're talking about because I don't know. Uh, me too. Can't catch it. <laughs> <laughs> Naya's talking to me and I don't know if she's trying to tell me something or not, Pastor Matt. But the prayers of the saints, we need to gather together. If you are going out to battle, yeah. You wouldn't just, would you meet up like every now and again? 
Come on. No, you gotta be on one accord. Come on. You gotta be ready. You gotta know yeah. your people. You gotta listen. I ain't saying you gotta be best buddies and eat every day together, but I'm saying show up and war yeah. together. Come on. Uh, just position yourself. Get yourself there. Well, I'm tired. I got 10 kids. I got, you don't understand. Sunday mornings are really hard. No, I do understand. I'm pregnant. I got a toddler. I got three more at home. I got a husband. I got a job I run, a business I run, and I do ministry. I know what it's like. Come on. But if I don't get in the prayer meeting, I, I'm telling you, I'm missing it. Yeah. And I'm not getting on you, okay? This is for me, too. But I need you to hear it. Uh, Pastor Matt, I'm telling you, I I told my mom we gotta get to prayer. I gotta get with Pastor Matt. I got I gotta get to prayer. I come in, no Pastor Matt. <laughs> he was taking care of something else. But let me tell you, I was yearning for that time in prayer. Just hear what I'm saying. He was taking care of something that was necessary. But I was yearning to be with the body. I was like, yes, Lord, I need it. So can I encourage y'all to come? Yes. Take 30 minutes earlier to get to church, to pave the way for the Holy Spirit. Make room for him yes. to be able to move. Can I, can I say that? Sister, you can preach it as well. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. Prepare yourself. Get ready. Sometimes we're sitting back at home not understanding why things are do happening the way that they are. And the Lord is like, we're like, move, Lord. And he's like, no, you move. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Come on. Come on, Bring sister. It. You move. I'm a personal trainer. Unless you go to the gym, you ain't getting muscles. <laughs> Letting you know. I don't care all this stuff they got on TV, G1, P3, all that jazz. Okay? It doesn't matter. If you don't go to the gym, you're not getting muscles. If you don't have resistance training, you're not building a stamina and not getting muscles. If you don't have a prayer life, your spiritual life is going to lack muscle. Yep. Come on. Preach it. I believe that. That's good. Oh, well, that's good. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. And then we're wondering why we're all frail and weak and blown to and fro. God, help us to plug in. Help us to dig in. We, the, oh, you hear this a lot in Christian lingo. Press in. Press, you know what I'm talking about. Press into the Lord. Well, press, that's what it means. When you're worshiping, I don't feel like it. I'm tired. I put my hands down. I don't know. I'm dirty. I mess up. Who cares? Lift up your hands and begin to praise the Lord and watch him move on your behalf. I don't know how to pray. Show up to the prayer meeting. Grab the word of God and say, Lord, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm here. God, I don't know. Just get there. How are you going to learn if you don't show up? That's right. Hear what I'm saying? And in your personal time. Yeah, come on. Personal time. Yes. Shut the door. Secret place. Secret place. He who prays in secret, I will reward what? Openly. Yes. We got to get in the prayer closet. We got to experience the kingdom of God for ourselves. Come on, sir. And what he wants to do in our lives, you got to hear the voice of God for yourself. Yes. It's not good enough that Pastor Matt tells you what the word of God says. Come on. You got to read it for yourself. Oh, now you got to work. I'm sorry. You got to get it for yourself. You got to lay hold of it for yourself. Well, I'm reading it, but I don't understand it. Then you say, God, I don't understand it. Yes. Yeah, I'll read, read on the Yeah. Make it real. I don't get it. There's 1,600 genealogies. And I don't know who one person is in here. I don't even know how to pronounce half these names. That's okay. Keep reading. Keep laying a hold of it. Keep laying a hold of the truth of the word of God. And what is Jesus doing in this, in this scenario here? When he says, but things are about to change. But when your perception changes... When your focus changes, but when you seek the kingdom of God, what first? See, sometimes we do, okay, I don't know about you, I do this. All right, wake up in the morning and then it's like, it's Selah and Jeff and the kids and lunches and school and, 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 and okay? Normal, 
mean, I take care of business. We are alive, okay? But he's saying, seek you what first? Seek the kingdom of God what first? Put it first. Amen. Put it first before all. That's it. And if you have, if you came in here today and you feel yourself going this way or that way or around, okay, God is just saying to you, come on, come on back, come on back, fresh perspective, fresh focus, come on back, seek, seek, pursue, be in pursuit after my kingdom, be in pursuit after my heart, be in pursuit after my word, be in pursuit after me in worship, be in pursuit after me in prayer, be in pursuit after my righteousness, who I am. Not who you want him to be. Who he is. And he's saying, for here I see this. The word of God, right, is our firm foundation. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Look, Jeff, are you smiling about the firm foundation? So we we took our kids. (laughs) We went to the beach. It was like a year ago or so. And we do devotions at night with the kids, and we were talking to him about them about building your house upon the firm foundation. Well, or, or building it upon sand. If you build it upon sand, it will fall when the winds and the, and the storms come and blow. But if you build it upon a firm foundation, the word of God, your house will what? It will stand against the test of time, against your trials, against your circumstances. So every time after that, which... Sometimes they probably don't even know what they're saying. But the kids would be like, that's right, firm foundation. That's right, we built it on firm foundation. But they were getting it in them because we were teaching them that this is what you were to build your life upon. And now even still today, they're like, firm foundation. That's right, Christ is the firm foundation. Amen. Right? And we need, as a body of Christ, to build upon. Relationship with the Lord. Yes. I'm talking about will you stand? Come on. Will I stand? Right. Will my children watch me stand? Come on. Come on. See, look, I'm not saying will your children ever not see you break. Because God knows my mine have already seen me broke. But it's okay to have them see me broke before the Lord. That's right. You hear what I'm saying? There's a difference between me being broken and bitter and angry and spewing venom all over the house and all over my family and leading them in the wrong direction than being broken before the the presence of God. And then saying, okay, mama and daddy are broken before the presence of God, but they're seeking the kingdom of God first because the kingdom of God first and all these things will be what? Added unto you. They're going to trust the Lord. I'm I'm watching them trust the Lord. Look, I'm not telling you it looks pretty. Somebody said to me at the gym the other day, that was the ugliest lift ever. I said, that's okay. Ugly in the gym, pretty out. (laughs) When the Holy Ghost is working with on your heart, sometimes it's ugly, man. I don't know about y'all, but I got some ugliness in here. Come on. Don't laugh, Jeff. (laughs) That the Holy, Holy Ghost needs to fix. Come on. And you know what he uses to fix it? Your situation. That's right. Your circumstance. He allows you to come into that place so he can show you the ugliness of you Mm. and reveal his righteousness and his glory and his truth. Yes. And say, come on, calling you up. I'm calling you higher. You were never going to arrive. So if you think you've already arrived, that's pride. Yes. Help us, Lord. And he wants to change that. Don't look at your neighbor and say, see, this is for you. (laughs) Look in the mirror and say, this is for you. I I need to seek the kingdom of God first. I need to. God, move on me to continue to remember to seek your kingdom. Seek your righteousness. Seek your peace. Seek your joy. Seek the Holy Ghost. So I want to hit this real quick. 
Mark 4.14. Would you put that up? <coughs> Haley. There's four different kinds of people. Y'all ready to look at them? Mark 4.14. The sower soweth the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the what? Word of God. Come on, y'all can be better than that. Word of God. That's right. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by what? Word of God. Okay, and the Bible also says without faith it's impossible to please him. Yes. So if you're not positioning yourself to either hear the word of God or read the word of God, how do you expect your faith to be built? Come on. Okay? Sometimes as believers, when we're believers for a while, we just get complacent, right, Pastor Matt? Yep. We just get kind of like, well, I know the word, right? But it's living. It's breathing. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It can encourage you. And sometimes we just leave our sword on the shelf, collecting dust. And he's saying, no, Pam, faith comes by hearing. And hearing comes by the word of God. Read my word and be encouraged in what I'm saying to you. For the sower went out to sow, and there was four different kinds of people. One, Mark 4.15 says, one that's by a wayside. Y'all ready? These are by the wayside where the word was sown, but they have heard and taken it away. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Let me go back. And these that were by the wayside were where the word was sown. And when they had heard it, so what they do? They heard the word. And Satan came what? Immediately. And taken away the word that was sown in their hearts. Yes. Let me say this. There is no fight. Can I say that? Help us, Lord. Ooh, there's no fight in you. There's no fight in me. This person has no fight. Come on. Why? Because they sat. You ever come into church, hear the word of God, and you're like, yeah, I, yes, I got it. And then you walk out that door, and within five minutes, it's snatched. Mm. It's gone. Mm. You forgot. Yeah. We're human. Okay, Jesus loves us. But he's saying the fight is a fight of faith. Yeah, yeah. So what you just heard behind the pulpit should increase your faith. And then when you come up to the battle, you use the word as a weapon to fight and stand and let it grow and take root inside of you and cause you to build on a firm foundation. But how many times do we hear the word of God and then we come up to that circumstance or that Goliath or whatever it is and then the word of God is gone because Satan has come to remove it to take it away to rob to kill to destroy we do not want to be this person where Satan immediately comes and takes the word of God out of your heart you're going to have two options as soon as that situation comes am I going to choose to believe God or am I going to let Satan steal it from me which one? You hear what I'm saying? Which one? Then we see the second person, the stony ground. Mark 4.16 says this, And these are likewise those that have sown on stony ground, rock-like, they're hard, who when they have heard, so guess what? These are church folk, Pastor Matt. Come on. They're hearing the word of God. That means they position themselves to listen to the word of God or read it. But their hearts are rock-like. Mm. When they have heard it, they paid attention to it. The word, they immediately received it with gladness. You ever see people? Yeah! Amen, Pastor Matt. Get it, preach it, Pastor Matt. Go ahead, Pastor Matt. That's right, Pastor Matt. And they cut you off and chop you up in two seconds. Mmm, Jesus help. But hey, watch it. Hell, that not be us. Yes. That's right. Because look, I'll be a good amen corner. That's right. Right now? Amen. Me and, me and I got that amen corner down. 
But I tell you what, our hearts can be just as hard and just as That's wicked right. That's right. Come on. and just as nasty That's right. if we're not careful. Yes. God help us. Because they received it with delight, with gladness. And then it says, verse 17, but they have no root mm. in themselves. Mm. No root. Why? The, 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 the root is a part of the plant that gives it support. Underlying water support, underlying nourishment. They have no root. Why? Because they endured, they remained under, but for a time, a temporary season. They said, well, the Lord, time's up. Mm. Oh. I've been in this trial too long. Time's up. I'm done. Time, I, I'm preaching to myself, baby. Hey, no. Time is up, Lord. Are you going to move yet? Because I'm done with this. But God is trying to give us roots. Come on, sister. He's trying to give us a firm foundation. He's trying to make us stick. Listen, the days, I don't know about y'all, but the days are only getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. If you watch any type of news or know anything that's going on, I don't care if it's one thing. The times are getting worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Addiction in this nation is getting worse and worse and worse and worse and the drugs are getting worse and worse and worse and alcoholism is getting worse and worse and worse and worse and sexual addictions and perversions are getting worse and worse and worse and worse and the divorce rate in this country is getting worse and worse and worse and worse and families are being torn apart even in the church come on why because we have no root come on we don't allow God to do it. It hurts. It's painful. I know. He didn't say it was going to be easy. But I'd rather be one day in his course Come on. than a thousand elsewhere. Amen. Amen. Peter said, when Jesus, Peter said to Jesus, where am I going to go? For you have the words of eternal life. I don't know about y'all, but I have thought a million times, and the enemy has come in a million times and said, Angela, you might as well just go back to what you used to do. Angela, you might as well just go back to drugs. Oh. Angela, it would be easier for you to... Look, for that moment of euphoria, it might be for that moment, but it ain't going to change nothing, and it's only going to make it worse. Come on. And so when I come to, it's only going to make it worse if I'm not dead. It's only going to make it worse. Now I'm going to have to pick myself back up and do it all over again anyway. Why? Because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. And there's no other way. And he's saying, look, I don't you want you to be the one that by the wayside, you come in, you hear the word of God, it's sown in your heart, and then you allow, hear me, allow Satan, get some fight in your bones. Come on. Get some fight. Look, in, in I think it's 2 Samuel, correct me if I'm wrong, but Shama had a pea patch. Mm. This is one of my favorite stories, okay? Shama had a pea patch. He had a land that God had given him. God has given you land. And he said, in that land, there's going to be peace. And in that land, there's going to be joy. And in that land, there's going to be freedom. And in that land, there's going to be deliverance. And in that land,
That's anymore. Right. Amen. The enemy is not welcome in your home Amen. anymore. Amen. He's not welcome in your mind yes. anymore. Amen. He's not welcome in your emotions anymore. You hear what I'm saying Amen. to you? Don't be the one that the seed is sown by the wayside and Satan comes to steal it. Stop letting the Philistines rob from your land. And it said that God brought a great victory. Yes. As soon as Shama puffed up his chest, mm. said, not today, Satan. Mm. Not today. Not today. Not in my land. Not my people. Nope. God has given me this yes, land. Yes, Lord. As soon as he did that, it said God wrought a great victory. He's working a victory for you. He already won it. Yes. We've got to lay hold of it. Then we don't want to be the ones. Listen. Circumstance can make your heart hard. That's right. It can. My husband and I were talking about this, I think, yesterday. We are talking about bitterness and resentment. Things not going our way. And all of a sudden, unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment. You can have it within your marriage. You can have it between you and the Lord. You can have it in your friendships. You can have it with your pastor. That's right. You can have it with the worship leader. Oh, I didn't get to sing this week. You can have it all these different things, okay? Man, somebody in this church could have been going through a hard time, and you think they rolled your eyes at you. They rolled their eyes at you, and now all of a sudden you hold a resentment in their heart for six weeks. Come on. Help and they didn't us. even think about you. Help us, Lord. They were going through their own thing. Right. You hear what I'm saying? Because why? The enemy wants to distort. He wants to get your eyes off focus. Get your eyes off the kingdom of God. Get your eyes off of what God is doing. So he'll make you look at everybody else. Mm. And everything else. And every other circumstance. So let, let us not be that people that only endure for a temporary season. Then it says when affliction, pressure... Who likes pressure? I don't like pressure. Only when I'm getting a massage. Okay, and even that hurts sometimes. <laughs> Burden or trial or persecution, persecution meaning pressed towards, arise for the what? The word's sake. Uh-oh, God's trying to work something in you for the word's sake. And immediately they're offended. <laughs> You ever been offended? Yeah. I've been offended. Yeah. I asked <laughs> I asked the Lord to help me with my offenses because I, a, a girl from our, our church did this object lesson. I thought it was awesome. She had a fence post for each offense that took place. Some at home, some at church, some at all these different things. And she literally stuck the fence post in the garden, in the ground. But before you knew it, she was on one side of the fence and the Lord was on the other. Mm. If you don't allow God to deal with us, there is going to be a fence that keeps you out of the presence of God and what he wants to do in your life. That's good. And then guess what? Everybody else on the other side of the fence too, and you all by yourself. Come on. Okay, because sin separates us. Not just from God, but sin separates us from people. Yes. And if we are offended and we allow those offenses to take root in our heart, we're just going to be bitter, angry, and lonely over here while everybody else is over here doing the, the work of the kingdom of God. Amen. So don't be one that allows offense to drive you. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm preaching over here to myself. Come on. Don't allow it to drive you away from what God wants to do. 2 Corinthians 4.16 says this. For which cause we faint not. The job of the enemy is always to get us to get weary of heart. We faint what? Say not. 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 You're not going to faint. That's right. But though our outward man perish, I feel like I'm being destroyed. Yet the inward man is renewed. That word renewed means intensely renovated. 
Have you ever feel like this situation is so intense? Whoa. I don't know if I can take one more. But he is repairing, repairing, rebuilding, and restoring you to a better state. Amen. Manuel, you hear me? A better state. Yes. He is repairing, rebuilding, and renovating yes. to a better yes. state. Yes. If we faint, what? Not. Not. That's right. And then it says, day by day day. This is a every single day process. Well, I'm tired, Angela. So am I. Day by day. Renew. Man, if y'all seen um, Danielle's post of Naya doing the bathroom at their house, y'all gotta see it. Naya's very talented. I'm just gonna toot her horn for a second. And this renovation looks absolutely beautiful. Amen. But I've actually talked to her through the process of the renovation. <laughs> and it didn't always look like a good time. It was hard. She was tired, driving back and forth, weary, right? But guess what? If you just look at the end result, man, I looked at that bathroom and I said, Woo! I got to get her to come do mine. It's beautiful. But there's a process day by day if we faint not and we allow God to renew, rebuild, and repair. I'm talking about remaining under the pressure of the affliction and the trial that God has you in. I said to my husband the other day, I'm so tired of this trial. I'm tired. My husband likes to tell me to take it on the chin and keep going. And he's right, even though I don't like that. <laughs> so keep going, Angela. God's going to do it. And this verse, this is, it says, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, it's only temporary what you're going through right now. The Bible says over and over again that this too shall pass. And it's working, it's fashioning, it's furnishing for us a far exceeding and eternal weight of glory. The work that God is doing in your heart is a far and more exceeding work than you can ever imagine. You've just got to remain under and endure for a season. Amen. We ain't screaming like that when we ended them. Yeah. We're like, yeah. I'm like, why? <laughs> Don't want it anymore. Mm. But he's saying, Angela, it's just temporary. It's for a moment. Mm. You have no idea the exceeding weight of glory that I am yeah. doing in your life and your heart. Yes, it's affecting much more than you could ever imagine. Hallelujah. While we look, check this out. We what? We look. What are you looking at? Remember he said, seek ye first the kingdom of what? God. And his what? Righteousness. Yeah. And all these things will be added unto you. The scripture says in verse 18, while we look. That word look means what is our aim? What are we regarding? What are we considering? Not the things which are seen. Because the things which are seen are what? Temporal. Mm. Temporary. That's right. But the things which are not seen, for the things which are not seen are temporal, but the things which, I'm sorry, the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are what? Eternal. You've got to remember that God is doing an eternal work inside of you. And he's doing an eternal work for your, your family and for the kingdom of God. But most of us, a lot of the time, just want to come on out the trial. So we want to quit. Or we want to move. Or we want to move churches. Or we want to move out of the marriage. Or we want to move away from the friendship. Or we want to get a different job. We just got to move. Because it's too much. But what is God telling you to do? Yeah. Because he might be saying, remain under. Stay under. I'm working something for my kingdom and for your glory. 
Then what does it say? Mark 4, 18. And this is the third person. These things which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word of God and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other entertaining things choke the word and become unfruitful. I thought that word sown among thorns was interesting because it was saying the, the word of God was being sown and there was those that were fruitful, but there were some that were among thorns. That means that they were planted where the, something sharp could take away its breath. The cares of this world are intended for a distraction. Deceitfulness is a delusion meant to cheat you. Has, have y'all ever had a care that completely weighs on you so much? It doesn't have to be something bad. It could be anything. Right now, we're just figuring out how to pay our bills fast enough. And just the weight of that can choke the word of God out of our heart. Can take away. I was thinking about this. I didn't have a string. So I grabbed this. And I was thinking about how. Let's go this way. You know. We were here. And this was my heart. Say. Each care. Began to slowly slowly, slowly just come in. Right now I can still breathe, right? Right now I can still serve the Lord. Right now I can still see straight maybe. Right now I can still travel. But each care that slowly, look, and we don't even realize it. Slowly, slowly, slowly until we completely are being short of breath and can no longer breathe. Because every care, we haven't allowed it to be dealt with the Lord. We haven't trusted him. We, we, we believe some and then we don't believe. And each care begins to completely what? And then we slowly what? Suffocate. Because it's a delusion. It wants to cheat you. And God wants to completely release you. He wants to allow you to breathe again. He wants to make you trust him again. He wants you to see that there's way more than what this world has to offer you. And don't be in delusion to the riches and the cares and the lusts of this world. And it doesn't have, once again, it doesn't have to be something bad. You could just be worrying about something that's going on. <clears throat> that's tormenting you. That's afflicting you. So the fourth person is this. They that are sown, sown on good ground. Say good ground. Good ground. We're going to be those that are sown on good ground. Yes. What do they do? They receive the word and it brings what? Fruit. Some 30 fold, some 60 fold, and some 100. Why? Because they endured and they grew. That's the whole thing of the Holy Ghost. He wants you to endure and he wants you to grow. He wants you to endure. He wants you to grow. He wants you to see. He wants you to surrender. He wants you to endure. He wants you to grow. You see what I'm talking about? He wants, look, and so many times we, got, we want to quit and God's saying, don't quit. Amen. Don't quit. It's not over. Don't throw in the towel. Surrender to me and I will make you new. I will repair. I will rebreach. I will make you new. I will renovate your heart. I will change it. Sometimes he's not trying to change your circumstance. He's trying to change you. That's good. Come on. Uh-oh. That's good right there. That hurts. Because we over here, get us out. Right. And he's like, stay in. Stay in the game. I'm changing you. Wow. Why? So you can be a better mama. Why? So you can be a better minister. Why? So you can be a better Christian. Thank you. Why? So you can look more like him. Yes. Like you. That's like you. Yes. That's 
regard. But there's four different people. That's convicting. What person am I? Mm. I know who I want to be. Because yeah. we all come in here like, yeah! Walk out, stony ground, <laughs> wayside, mm. thorns. Mm. <laughs> Come on. Are you talking about me looking like a cheerleader? <laughs> 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 I love you too, Pastor Matt. So Jesus says, look, I'm going, pick who you want to be. Choose who you want to be. Choose who the, you want to serve. Choose this day what you want your Christian experience to look like. Because I have more for you. And Matthew 6, 25 says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought. Be anxious about nothing in your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, what you, your body shall wear, what you shall put on. Is life not more than me and your body not more than raining? And whether I looked at that and I said, isn't the Lord gracious? He knew you're going to be anxious about that. Yeah. I mean, why else would he put it in the word of God? That's right. He said, I know you're going to be worried. You're going to be worried about food. You're going to be worried about what you're going to wear. You're going to be worried about this and that. You're going to be worried about many things. But I'm telling you, don't be anxious for anything. But in prayer and supplication, let your request be known unto God. And the peace of God that surpasses all will guard your heart and mind. That means that word guard your heart and mind means he's a watchman. That's right, yes. And he's like, no, nah, that's not going to bring peace. You move on. That's not going to bring peace. You move on. Nope, nope. He's a watchman. He's watching your heart and watching your mind. Nope. No peace there. Move on. But guess what? He said, what? Per oh, prayer again. Mm -hmm. Prayer and su supplication means like you keep going. That's right. You keep going. Oh, I asked the Lord once already. I've been asking the Lord stuff for years that I haven't seen come to pass yet. Waiting. Tarrying. And he says, take no thought for tomorrow. Don't allow anxiety, worry, nervousness, uneasiness, the unknown, overwhelming sense of apprehension. I'm overwhelmed, Lord. A mental distress or affliction, an aggressive attack or torment. Don't allow it. That word therefore means because these things I say unto you as a believer, a follower, or a disciple of Christ. What does he say? He's challenging their focus. He's challenging what is your heart chasing after? Look, is your, is your heart chasing after your situation to be changed? It could be as simple as that. Like, I'm just pursuing the Lord because I want to see my situation change. But he said, what? Seek ye first the kingdom. <coughs> and then, I'm telling you, I have to check my heart. Because I, I seek the Lord, Rob, for the Lord to change my situations. Because <laughs> I don't like them. <laughs> and I'm like, Lord. Help me seek you. Yes. Hold on. I, you hear what I'm saying? Hold on, Lord. I'm sorry. Forgive me. I'm seeking you to change something. Mm -hmm. It gets tricky, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It does. I was. I called myself. I said, ooh, I am seeking him to change this. Okay, look. I understand. He, we cry out and we ask the Lord to change certain things. And that's not a bad thing. Right, right. But th when that becomes all we're seeking him for, yeah. we're seeking his hand and not his face. Come on. Mm -hmm. That's, that's good dangerous. That's good. Yeah. Because now, and all of a sudden, I'm not receiving nothing from the Lord. I wonder why. Yeah. Because I'm not seeking him for him. Yeah. Yeah. I'm seeking him because I want to see him. Fix that because it's uncomfortable for me. Yeah. God, help us. Yes, Lord, help us. Help our focus. Now he, he begins to challenge his disciples, his followers, his good grounders. <laughs> okay? And he says, look, 
Lay not up, Matthew 6, 19, lay not up for yourselves treasures on this earth where moth and rust corrupt and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up, store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth and rust corrupt nor thieves break in and steal and destroy. For where your treasure is, your heart will be also. Where is your treasure? What are you seeking after? What am I pursuing daily? What am I in a daily pursuit after? I know some of this is basic, but we have to be reminded. That's right. I'll tell you what. Have you ever sat down with a person before and just sat for five minutes and you hear their conversation and you know exactly what they're about? You can sit down with somebody for five minutes and know exactly what they're about. Come on. Know exactly where their heart is. But you know somebody's bitter. Pastor Matt, she did this and she did that. And I didn't like this about him and her. And I didn't like that. Okay, what is all that? You know exactly where they're at. Bitterness, resentment, anger, frustration. You know exactly where they're at. Come on. And God is saying, where are you laying up treasure? Listen, I would love to leave my children a legacy of, of, you know, some money in a house and, you know, things they can. But the legacy that I want to leave for them is the kingdom and the glory Amen. of God. Amen. I want them to know how to travel through this earth laying a hold of Jesus. Yes. Laying a hold of him and not letting go. Because guess what? A house can burn. A car can break down. A bank account can be empty. Empty. Can I get an amen? amen. Okay. Okay. Things, people die. Things happen. Yeah. Life happens. But what are they going to be laying hold of? Where are they, are they going to know where to run? Because Jesus is saying, where are you laying up your treasure? Amen. If I'm just laying my treasure here on earth, one day I say, God forbid something happens, my kids aren't going to know what to do. If I'm building earthly treasures all the time. That's right. And I'm not saying that God can't bless. God can bless. And God does. That's right. Bless. But he's saying, what is your main focus? Is it the kingdom of God? What are our priorities? Fix our priorities. What is the direction of our gaze? Mm. What are we gazing at? That's good. <laughs> my husband has the most beautiful blue eyes. And so does my baby. She's got beautiful blue eyes. And I can get caught in them. And I'm allowed to because we may. But. That's how we should be with the Lord. That's right. God, I want to gaze yes, into your Lord. face. Jesus. I'll never forget, Rob. You told me when Elijah used to get upset about something or couldn't, like, it, he was just ha either having fear or anxiety or something was going on. I remember to this day, you said you would put your face on his. And you would tell him it's going to be okay. So all he could see is Rob's face. Wow. That's good. But Rob's a big dude. And Rob, but there's security in that. Yeah. Yes. It's gonna be okay. His father is telling him yes. it's yes. it's gonna be okay. Yes. And sometimes we just gotta nestle our face right up yes. to Jesus father. and let our father tell us it's gonna be okay. Yes. And then all and look, all we're gazing at is Jesus. Yes. All we're gazing at is the blood of Jesus. All we're gazing at is his righteousness and his kingdom, his peace and his joy. Gaze into his face. Let him saturate you with his spirit. Put your gaze back on him. Forget about how they hurt you. Forget about what they've done wrong. Forget about all the injustice. Forget about the hurt. Forget about them, but it's still there. Then gaze at him until it's gone. Gaze at Jesus until it's gone. Look back to him, he's saying today. And he's like, he says this, look, you don't even have to work for it. Y'all ready? Matthew 6, 26. 
Behold, the fowls of the air, they, they sow not, neither reap, ne neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you much better than they? He's saying they don't even work for what they're provided for. That means you don't have to toil. You don't have to work, work it up. You can gather through his grace and love. No, that's good. I remember one time I was struggling with something and the Lord said, Angela, stop fighting and surrender. I was like fighting the sin, you know what I mean? It's like, but God said, no, just surrender. And I don't know who needs to hear that, but sometimes we, we, we in this battle and we fighting for our lives. And sometimes the Lord is just saying, surrender and I'm going to fight for you. Yes. Surrender and I'm going to fight for you. I'm going to provide for you. So what do we do? We come boldly through the throne of grace. Boldly. Shelby, you can come up to God and come boldly. Yeah. Based on the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And that word boldly means with expectancy. Mm. God, I'm expecting you. Because you said, seek ye first the kingdom of God. And I'm putting you first. And I'm expecting you to give me peace. Because that's who you said you are. You said you are the God of peace. So I'm expecting for my heart and my mind to be guarded with peace, Lord. God, I'm coming to you boldly because I'm coming with expectancy for you to fill me with joy. Because you said the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy, and the Holy Ghost. God, I'm coming to you boldly in my time of need because you So I'm coming boldly because you will deliver me because you said that you would. Yeah. I'm coming boldly for my family, oh God, with expectancy because you said whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Yeah. And God, I'm believing you for my freedom. Yes. I come boldly because I'm a child of the king. That's right. Amen. You come boldly because you're a child of the king. In our time of what? Need. That means you got to know you need assistance. You can't handle it on your own. That's right. We can't handle it on our own. So what state are we living in? And I'm closing here. Matthew 6, 27 says, Which of you, this one always catches me, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature. That's right. The Lord is in absolute control. And the Lord will always have the last say. Amen. He always has the last word. You ever? I think when we fight, sometimes one of us will like to have the last word. But the Lord is saying, I have the last say. Yes. I have the last word. And worry and fear will only keep you broke down and in bondage. Okay. So he's saying, can, can you living in a state of worry? Now I say, I'm, I'm not saying worry isn't going to come up. Hear me. Worry and fear are going to what? Come up. Yeah. It's what you do with it. That's right. That's good. Do we surrender? Come on. Do we seek ye first the kingdom of God? That's right. Or do we live in it? Right, right. Now, every now and again, I gotta catch myself because I'll be going off in the direction of living in it. <laughs> okay. And yeah. and when you live in in that state, everyone else can see you living in that state. Yeah, Because everyone, what are we gonna do? Where are we gonna go? How are we gonna? What are we gonna? And there's torment. Yes. But when we seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, he brings peace. Right? Where we, well, so can, can, you, can you add anything by worry to your life? By fear? I like this. God dropped this in my heart. He said, I don't move according to your works or your worry. Like you can't worry enough to make me move. 
Right. You know what I mean? Like sometimes we go before and we're like, oh, no, 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 Jesus, I need you to, I need you to, and, oh, and, and, and the Lord is like, faith. Come to me in faith. You can't work it enough. You can't pay your tithes enough. You can't pray enough. You can't read enough. You can't work yourself enough to get God to move. It's faith. Faith and faith alone. Faith and faith alone. So they don't reap. And they, and they don't sow and they don't reap. But God does what? He takes care of them. So I want to encourage you this morning that he is going to provide all that you need according to his riches and according to his glory. And it's by grace and grace alone. Now if you would come up. But the Lord says this, but seek, endeavor, desire, worship, and never stop. Endeavor, desire, worship, and never stop. Endeavor, desire, worship, and never stop. Now y'all hear me? Endeavor, desire, worship, and never stop. What? His kingdom. His kingdom and his righteousness, his righteousness and relationship with you matters more to him than anything. I want to read this to you real quick. Jehovah is our righteousness. Jehovah is the one who sanctifies us. Jehovah is our peace. Jehovah is always there. Jehovah heals. Jehovah gives provision. Jehovah's banner over you is love. And Jehovah is your shepherd. That's his kingdom. His peace. His healing. His provision. His joy. His power. His love. That's what we seek after. You seek him first. And through seeking him, he'll provide all those things. And sometimes we just get a little twisted and we just got to refocus. We just got to refocus. If y'all want to stand with me.